Hi, Floss Tube. It's Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Today is June 4th, 2022, and I'm shooting this video from my bedroom upstairs in my house. And I was looking for some different lighting options today. This was a great room, but as I sat sort of in front of a window, um, man, it just blew everything out. So I found a little bit of a, of a darker corner. And this is a chair or recliner that's very comfortable that sometimes I stitch in. Um, it's, but I don't get much stitching done because once I put my feet up, I just want to fall asleep. So I don't stitch much up here anymore. These recliners will um, take down the tiny house when we start to move. So anyway, I hope you're having a great day. We have really one month left before it's the 4th of July. I do not know what's going on with this year. It's like blink and it's half over already. So buckle up. I'm going to show you some more patriotic things because I sense by the time I do my next, next video, we're going to want to talk about fall stitching, maybe some summer stitching, but probably fall stitching and, and even some Christmas because it'll be Christmas in July for a lot of people, especially stitchers who are prepared and ready for the holidays unlike some of us who just like to stitch in season. Today is, um, it's been sort of muggy here. I, um, I live in Washington State and we've had a very wet spring. I think April and May were the wettest and coldest on record. And now with the temperature starting to pick up, but the, we get a lot of onshore um, precipitation and it just creates sort of that mugginess that you get um, more in the Midwest and the East Coast. I mean, this is nothing compared to that. Let's just say it's a little uncomfortable, but it's not bad. My hair, though, starts to, like, get massive volume when it's like this. And then the other day, we had a thunderstorm. So it, you know, broke that heat that was happening and made it nice and cool. So, But at night, the windows are open and the bugs come in. In fact, one bit me on the side of the face twice last night. I woke up, I'm like, what had that happened? mosquito must have got in somehow. Let's see what else is going on. I'm going to go hang out with my friend Lori um, for a few days this next week. And then I was going to go down to the tiny house down the property in Oregon this weekend, but my husband went down. He said, it's just pouring rain. So we just, he decided to just come home early and I'll go to Lori's tomorrow instead of going to the tiny house first. Um, we'll hang out for a few days and I'm going to head over to the other side of the mountains to my sisters and go to my nephew's eighth grade promotion. I can't believe these kids are just growing up. It feels like he should be about four, but he's not, he's, in, he's finishing eighth grade. He's going to be a high schooler. Um, what else is going on? Then after that, I'm going to come home. I have a, a couple days off. I'm going to um, go to the framer. I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm going to take to a framer in Silverton, Oregon. And my sister's had something um, frames there. And my friend Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42, she's had something framed there. And I think Lori Textiles has had something framed there too. So I am excited to see how they do with this. In fact, let me see if I can find it in my pile. I'll show you right now what I'm going to take down there. Okay, this is Joyce Noel, and it is by Blackbird Designs. I think this is stitched in mostly the called for threads. It has eyelets, an eyelet alphabet. This is a very, very, very faint blue um, background. I think it's Silvery Moon by Zweigart, maybe? And I just love this. I think it's just it's one of the prettiest things that I stitched from Blackbird. And I just, I really love Blackbird designs. So I'm going to take this down. I think I'll have just a simple silver frame put on that. And then uh, this one, which y'all died for last year, was Cottage Garden Sampling's Peace on Earth, I think. This is stitched, I want to say this is on 46 Count Mocha by Weeks. And it's on the Zweigart base. But I, I had so much fun stitching this. And it stitched so quickly. I, I can't wait to see more people stitch it and see what you stitched on. I think I changed one of the colors. I can't recall. If you go look at my 
Instagram account, you'll see any changes that I made to it. I usually post that. And if you can't find it, you can let me know. So those are the two that I'm going to take down to be, to be framed. I have my garden club, my Blackbird Garden Club series is out with Patty Nicolosi. She um, has done some framing for me. She does a fantastic job. She's a one person show though, and she had a little illness. And so she, she got backed up, but she's great at communicating and very responsive if you have any questions. So I'm excited to get that back. So more framed cross stitch coming my way. Um, I have a big pile and I, I need to get them framed, but I hate to frame too many because it's just more that I'll have to store while we're building our house in Oregon. Now, I brought a few things to show you. A couple of previous, some previous finishes that are always worth looking at. This is Lady Liberty by Blackbird. And I stitched this, I think I borrowed the chart from the Lending Library, which is um, Patricia Geary from Blackbird Design, from the Fans of Blackbird Designs Facebook group, has a Lending Library, um, but you have to be active in that group for quite a while before she will allow you to borrow something. And so I had borrowed this, I believe, from her. And Faye Rigsby, the Carolina Stitcher, she finished this for me. She just did a great job. I mean, her seam, um, she did a great job on matching the seams. And then that flag is awesome. And there's the beginning. And then I did stitch Lady Liberty on the top. I know that some people don't haven't done that. And, and that looks great too. But this was stitched in 2016 and she put a, couple little charms on there and just did a great job. It's got like a, um, a maybe some chipboard on the bottom, I'm going to guess, but this was one previous finish. I just love this. And then my friend Kim from Canada, we were in an exchange. So this is funny. We did some sort of exchange through farm girl gatherings retreat. Like, I think we were going to, we didn't participate in the retreat exchange and we wanted to. And so we decided to do an exchange. And these are the Prairie Schooler um, strawberries that she stitched for me. And the finishing, she is so good at finishing and her needlework is incredible. I miss that girl. We just have not had the same level of being able to go, get across the border in the last few years. So I really miss seeing Kim. Look at this one. I mean, it's all flags and she stitched it with some wool on the top and the, the, it's like, man, I don't know what she stuffs this with, but it is, it is amazing. And then she did this one. I love the colors on this. Isn't that, look at that. Isn't that just like so perfect? That point is just perfect. And then the last one is a full flag, isn't that oh, amazing? So she is an amazing friend. I'm missing her. I can't wait until we see each other again. And people, the world is starting to wake up a little bit. There's still COVID going around for sure. We do have some treatments to help people, which is good news. And hopefully we can do more travel in the future. So those were two. I have a couple of framed pieces I'll show you as well. <clears throat> this one is by, um, I, I bought it as a kit, but you can buy it on Cooler Design Studio. There are four different seasons. I've also done the Christmas one. I'm trying to, we've got some reflection here. Let me see if I can get this. Nope. This room has windows all the way around. So I apologize. You're going to get some reflection on it. It is, there were kits. I want to say, um, I'm going to say that it was probably, I probably bought them 20 years ago. Is that right? 20 years ago? Anyway, I bought all four of them. I love them all. This is it. I think this is like a 16 count Ada, if I would have to guess, probably 16 count. And the kids with the seashells are amazing. Oops. Kids with the seashells are amazing. And then the tomato. 
I'm not sure what I did with the pattern. I think I got rid of it once I stitched this. That camp, doesn't that look like summer camp with the, the lashed um, sticks around it? I think that's fantastic. Then you've got the picnic scene and the, the drummer for the parade, or the, the patriotic kid, the baseball mitt, some travel memorabilia, postcards. This, the fair, you got the pigs at the fair and sunflowers and watermelon and bees and a bee scup. These are so interesting to look at. And I think that they're fun to stitch. They are backstitch heavy, but as long as you know and you're willing to do it, it's worth it. I just really, really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. And the call for fabric was just fine. Worked just fine. It's a very neutral, and it was easy to work with, um, Ada. So I still have two more. I have the autumn and the spring kits. I don't know where those are. I haven't seen them for a while. Hmm. They must be in my craft room somewhere. Anyway, and this one is one of the, um, I think it's called Star Spangled, Stars and Stripes Forever Live, maybe. Maybe the name of it is the picture itself. I don't remember. I, again, I don't have this one. I think this was also a kit and I used the Ada that was in the kit. And I really like it. And I sort of really like that there's a lot of space around it. It could have been a tighter fit, but I think that this was an off the rack um, frame and it fit reasonably decent. I mean, it's more space than I probably would, would put on it now, but I had to pay a fraction of the cost for the frame itself. This pattern is by Ursula Michaels, and she does several of these. I have one that is a Christmas one, I think, um, that has that same quilt on a line type of a design. So I really enjoy that a lot. I have another previous finish. I'm going to be right back because I want to be sure to show you this. Hold on just a second. Well, I went through the house and I found a lot more stuff. And so... Let me just show you a few more things here. So this is, make sure it's not too dusty. This is Shepherd's Bush, 4th of July. Is that what it's called? I'm not sure, but it's such a pretty little stitch. And it fits right inside this. Oh, this must be a 5 by 7 I guess, frame. Now it's right up against my stitching, but I'm not mad about it. It's just fine. I just... Laced it and put it in the back here. This frame was $5, so who cares, right? And then I have, this is the first retreat that Priscilla and Chelsea did, Stitching with the Housewives. This was at Farm Girl Gatherings. We had a great time. I did not have this done before the retreat, so I think I was just stitching in other things and time got away from me and I just wasn't very disciplined about doing my homework ahead of time. So we were supposed to have this stitched. And what ended up happening is I'm at the retreat and I'm having to spend all my time stitching diligently, just super fast. I stitched in hand and just knocked it out. But truly I was putting the Smyrna stitches in. Where are the Smyrnas? I think they're in the middle of these these little um, flowers. I was doing it just as the finishing class was starting. So I love it. It turned out adorable and um, I would do it again. I just wasn't very prepared. So lesson learned. And what happened is I didn't feel like I got as much out of the retreat as I normally would because I was so busy just trying to get the stitching done instead of visiting with my friends, which is why I went there to begin with. So there's that one. Uh, here is Berry Days by Blackbird Designs. This one is, there's this is stuff with polyfill and it's, I'm not really happy with it. It's a little lumpy. I don't remember what fabric line that is, but I do love it with this. And I put, I feel, felt like this is a big enough finish that it would be able to hold true big pom-poms on there. And I think it's fun, but I might, I might restuff this with sawdust. We have a ready supply at the, at the cabin. Or Todd sawing, mil sawing lumber and creates that sawdust for, that I can use. But I do love, I do love this one. The variegation on that red thread is awesome. I can't remember what I stitched it with. And I don't know that the year is on here. Oh yeah, 2019. That's the bottom. 
So there's that one. And this one I finished last year. This is Blackbird Justice for All. This one comes with an alphabet. I think it's above this. And I ended up not stitching the al alphabet, obviously, and stitching this motif that was in the middle of the alphabet right there and just made an abbreviated version of it. Um, and I thought it turned out great. I like it a lot. Can't wait to hang it this year. Ooh, it's dusty over here. This one is a little house needlework deep in deep in the wood deep in the field under the bright sunny skies grow sweet little berries or jellies and pies. And that's that's so sweet, isn't it? I like the finish. I'm not sure that I'm wild about the white with this, but I guess there's white on here. It's super sweet though. And our strawberries are like they're knee high. They're huge. And they're full of blooms and I need to go weed the, the berry patch. I started and I have so much weeding to do. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so, and then there's this amazing finish that Jill Lynn at Acorns and Threads did for me. This is the Early American series by Little House Needleworks. She made a banner out of it. I just gave her kind of free reign to do what she wanted with it. So here is Paul Revere and Patrick Henry. And then the next two are Abigail Adams and Betsy Ross. And then we have the middle block and Nathan Hale. Then we have three, John Hancock, Molly Pitcher, and Martha Washington. So she spent a lot of time on these and she just did a really amazing job. This banner, I can't show you where I'm sitting because it's too big. It's like showing a quilt, right? It's just too big. But you can see how nice it is and how well finished it is. And this middle one, what I love is that she put another little um, loop on the back so that when you hang it on somewhere, you have a, another support. So it really drapes nicely if you want it, if that's the way I want to display it. So that is, that's it, I think, for, for previous patriotic finishes. I've got those patriotic FOs that need to be fully finished, and I took off a couple days next week. That is going to be my focus, trying to get as many of those done. Just sort of days off work, not for any other purpose, but to probably weed in my yard and fully finish projects. So what have I been working on? Well, let me tell you. I have two projects that really have been my focal points. Oh, I have one other project here I want to show you. This is from my friend Tara Sullivan. I got it at the Midwest Retreat last year. This, I think, is a Chessie in me. Isn't that adorable? I stole it from, I can't remember who it was. Somebody else had opened it, and I knew that I wanted it, so I went and stole it from them. But she did a great job. It's on a book. She painted this and it stands up nicely, which I love. I love it as a display that stands up and it's just, she did a great job. It's adorable. Love that flag. Love the colors. Thank you, Tara. All right. So now what have I been working on? Well, I've been working on two projects and I have t was about 10 or 11 projects that I'm focusing on May, June, and July. I finished several so far and I am shooting to finish both of these by the end of June and I'm getting there. We'll see. So this first one is, um, Stacy Nash summer at Hollyberry farm. I was like, what is this? Oh yeah. It's summer at Hollyberry farm. And it's on 40 count espresso by R and R. I finished that, um, border and this is, the border I substituted, I think country redwood, I used cranberry by, by, um, gentle arts instead. And I also stitched the little horse. So that's done. I started the little fence at the bottom, the border mostly met. I was off by one stitch, but I just fudged it and nobody's going to know any different. I love this color palette. I love it. I love it. This is so pretty, even more so in person. It's just such a pretty, pretty stitch. Now I've got that big house and it's no joke. 
that's a big house. And that, that, um, that flag's got a lot of dense stitching. The rest of this is just, you know, it's not too much. So I, I want to work on that one. Maybe next. I'm not sure. I spent quite a bit of time working on this one since the last time we just, we met, which is live on little and don't have a panic attack. I mean, there's people that are like, I can't wait for this one. I know. I totally understand. So um, this is live on little. My understanding is it's coming out sometime this year, but I didn't ask Paulette. If you want to know, just be patient. It'll come out. I have finished. Let's see. Since the last time we chatted, I put in all of this here. I, I went up this way. I did all the rest of the house. I think I had just put some bricks in, just the mortar on part of this and a couple of windows. So I have almost finished that house, that not lovely Cape Cod, you know, house and done a lot of the landscape above the water. Now let's talk about fill and stitching. I think, and this is just the world according to Lisa, you may completely disagree with me and we can have respectful discourse on that. I am fine if we have differences of opinion. I think there are people, and I think we all have some of this, but maybe you have one tendency over the other. I know I do. Um, there are people that just love the feel of needle and thread and the rhythm of stitching specifically in hand, but just that kind of rhythm. And they really love the fill in aspect where you don't have to look at the pattern as much and you're just really enjoying that moment of filling in that area that has just fill in stitching, right? It's just the same color and, and there's no variation. And then there are people who like to put puzzles together and they like to stitch a motif here and a motif there and they like the variegation and they like the variety of the pattern and they want that pattern to evolve on their finished product. So that's more who I am. So when it comes to fill and stitching, it kills me. Like I have to make myself do fill and stitching. And I posted on Instagram. Oh my gosh, there's plenty of people out there that are like, oh, I love to do fill and stitching. And I'm just like, it is torture for me. It is not engaging enough, um, but I get it done. It's like, I just suck it up and do it. And sometimes even like with Mirabilia is you get to that point where all right, I got to stitch, you know, this whole fold of her dress is all white, you know, but then it goes to another color and another color. And so, um, I just love, I just love the pieces that are the, the motifs. That's my jam. So do I love stitching the flowers? Yes. I saved it until that toward the end here. So I would have that treat to work on and you know, I did quite a bit. So here's a trick that I use. I just divide the roof up into probably three or four sections. I'll probably put another line on it so that when I'm filling in, I can do smaller, smaller goals, right? So how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? It's turning out great. It's a lot of stitching, a lot of stitching. So those are the two that I have worked on the most. Now I'll be honest. I was a little bit tired because I was got stuck on that fill and stitching and I didn't, I wasn't quite ready to go back to um, summer at Hollyberry farm. So I did pull out another one and that one on my, on my patriotic stitching is the work basket, the village. What's it called? The, yeah. Just village. So this one, I think, you probably could find it on the secondary market. I don't think work basket is in print anymore, but I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. And it says, um, earth hath no sorrow that heaven can't not heal. So and it's got like a little stable. It's got a, um, these funky trees, which I love. It has this um, little house in front of this bigger house. It has a stable, this big grand house a birdhouse. And so I picked that up. What I love about this is it fits in my 11 by 17 Q snap perfectly. So I don't have to adjust it. There's like no extra anywhere. These, I put pieces of batting so it helps keep that nice and taunt on here. This is um, taut, not taunt, taut. 
And so this is, I think, 40 count vintage exemplar. And this is as far as I am. So you can see how fun the, the trees are. They're totally wonky. I remember stitching on this before. Um, I think I just had that tree done. So I've worked on this today a little bit. But you have to pay attention. Like you can't doze off on this one. And I was a little bit frustrated with myself because I kept making mistakes and having to pull thread out. But once I got past that um, and it's starting to develop, I can't wait. I can't wait to continue to work on it. I don't think I have the threads up here. I do know that the yellow, there's a yellow thread in here and you can see just a little bit of it right here. It's super ghosty. There's a sun on here that's yellow. There's a dog. I'm going to change the yellow because you just can't see it well enough. But other than that, the rest of the colors look great. So that is the village. That is village by the work basket. And that is what I have worked on. So I want to say thank you to a couple people. Um, I have a sweet gift in the mail from Annie, from Annie B's Folk Art and her daughters, Chelsea and Belle. They are hosting the Jane Austen Sal, Jane Austen 2022 Sal. I think I'll put the hashtag at the bottom here so you can see it. And Annie got me turned on to the stitching parlor, Jane Austen um, patterns. And so I, I, if you watched my last video, I emailed Clara Blaylock, who is the, uh, the stitching parlor artist. And she said that the patterns are still available. And I contacted Janita Acorns and Threads and she ordered several for me. I was hoping to pick those up today, but with my schedule change, it'll be later next week. So you'll see them in the next video. I do have a Jane Austen pattern that I was sort of waiting to start because I thought maybe I would start the other one through the stitching part of parlor first, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to kit it up today and start it anyway. And I will probably stitch both of them. I'll probably have a couple of new starts and I have another new start that I'm, that I'm going to work on. I'll show you shortly. Well, Annie, um, they're so funny. I just love their Instagram stories. They had their, their projects that they started stitching on. And they had the, the mom, Elizabeth Bennett's mother, like a little meme of her from the Pride and Prejudice BBC version, where she says, I'll have you know, we stitch with 20, four and 20 families or stitchers. That meme was on somebody's Instagram, one of the three of them. And I just started laughing. Um, but they sent me floss drops and he sent floss drops. She has these in her Etsy store and she said, isn't it interesting what people thought Elizabeth Bennett or the characters from the Jane Austen shows would, um, look like or books would look like before we had the shows. So these are, um, I'm not sure where she got these, but they're, they may have been out of, uh, you know, older, older books, but she made these into floss drops. I don't know that I could ever punch anything on here to put flosses on. I probably would have to frame them all because I love them so much. So there was this um, set of floss drops and I just dropped it. A, um, a key ring or not a key ring, a floss ring with a book and a button. And I mean, when I opened this up yesterday, I absolutely gasped. I was like, oh, and it has a little, um, I had a little wrap around it to keep these together that was looked like manuscript paper and it was perfect. It was so perfect. I was so happy about that. And I can't wait to start my Jane Austen. I'm going to have a great time stitching with these, with those girls. So thank you. Thank you for that. I also was uh, the recipient of a thank you from Timmy, who is vintage tulip designs. She's in Hungary. So she is the person who designed this one. And I showed this to you a couple of videos ago. Also, the stitcher who won this, I think it's Kathy Mollen. Um, I will put your name at the bottom here. I haven't heard from you. So please um, take a look at the, the drop down box below and get in touch with me. If I don't hear from you by the time I do my next video, I'm going to redraw for this. So that this is what Timmy, she made this design and she contacted me and thanked me and asked me if I would like um, another design. And so I went and picked one out, which is super kind of her. 
And that is, one moment, I'll show you what she sent me. Sorry, I've got so much stuff here. I had asked for, I think it was, I can't remember which one it was. She sent two. I think it was this one. She has an Etsy store. I will link her below. Isn't that pretty? Wouldn't that be a pretty, just a pin cushion too? I'm sorry. This is just, let me pull this out of here. It is very glary with the lighting up here. One moment, please. I am not good with the, with the, uh, crinkly papers that I try not to get them stuck on my pattern. So there's this one. And I think that would just be so pretty just as a pin cushion. And then, and that would be a great, wouldn't it be a nice gift for a friend? And then she also sent this one. This is Live, Give Love 2022. This is a new design. Isn't that gorgeous? The two of those stitched side by side as pin cushions in a little display would be so pretty. So pretty. So she sent that and she sent me a project bag that um, has her little name, her name on it. And it's vintage tool of design. And she sent me this pretty project bag and she knows, must know that I love blue. Look at those. Sorry about that. My computer stopped recording because it was completely full. So I had to clear some videos out that should have been cleared out before now. But I just want to thank, thank you, Timmy, from Vintage Tulip Designs for this beautiful bag. It has beautiful tulips in the back, and um, it was really thoughtful. She also included a little needle minder, needle book, I should say. And that's super sweet. I love the color on that. So very thoughtful. Thank you. I appreciate it. It, wasn't, it was um, unexpected and very thoughtful of you. So thank you. All right, now I did not draw the winners ahead of time. So it's going to be a surprise for me as much as it is you and my husband's going to be home pretty soon. So I don't want to wait. Um, th these were the giveaways last time. And thank you for following the floss tube rules, which is not saying the word giveaway and for being 18. So I'm going to announce the winners by showing you the chart. This is Rose City Sampler by you and I and friends. And I'm just going to say the winner is, and I'm going to put the winner's name down right here. So you got to read. You got to look. If you're stitching, stop and listen. Stop and look at the screen because I'm going to put your name up here. This next one is Primitive Sheep for you and I and friends by you and I and friends. The winner is, I don't know if it comes on this way or this way. The next one is Liberty Days. This is the one I stitched last time. And... This also is by you and I and friends. The winner is the last one is God bless America by Erica Michaels. It's the one I bought two of because I liked it so much. And the winner is thank you for all of your support and by um, entering the giveaways. So I have one more for next time. This is Pretty's a Peacock by a Little House Needleworks. I have finished this. I just need to FFO this. This chart is adorable. It's adorable. It was a lot of fun to stitch. It stitched up very quickly. So if you would like Pretty's a Peacock, tell me what your favorite um, holiday, 4th of July, tell me what your favorite summer memory. We'll just say that because not everybody is does the 4th of July and you might be in a different country that doesn't do the 4th of July. So tell me what your favorite summer memory is. And I think I've done these questions before. These are my favorite questions, big, wide open ended questions that I get the best stories and people become very nostalgic for summer. I remember, um, when we were young, we used to go camping with my, on my dad's side of the family with another couple of families and my uncle red, his real name was James. So they called him Uncle Red. He's a redhead. And my dad was a redhead too. He would make, they would make homemade ice cream. And we had, they had a hand crank one where we had to take turns hand cranking it. And one time I tried to peek in there and my, and they're like, no, 
don't let the salt in on the ice cream because, you know, all the ice that's around it, you have to add rock salt to make it um, colder. But just eating that, that fresh ice cream and they'll put Butterfingers in some of it or they make different strawberries, fresh strawberries. It was so good when it was so hot out. We'd run around or we camping. It was so much fun. I think there was an electric one too. So there would usually be two different flavors of ice cream. So, all right. So let me talk. Hold on just a second. Oh my gosh. Cross-stitch fuel. So I think that was from a farm girl retreat. I'm getting a little bit of dry mouth here. All right. Let me grab some more things here. And I'm going to try and grab them. So they don't fall on the floor. These are um, there's a couple of patterns in here that I bought that really some of these are kitted up items that I just I think I've shown you before. In fact, one I had you vote on which one I should start. But I just love coming back and looking at them. I think, gosh, I need to live 300 years to stitch all the things. That I want to stitch on. And I've also realized, I think I'm down to 50, 50 some whips. My husband just laughs. He's like, you're down to 50 some whips. I'm like, yes, I am. And I'm glad for that. But I think there are some in there that I would stitch and not hang on my wall. So I'm going to part with some of those. I'm going to part with some of those. I'm going to go through and look and see... Uh, is this something that is frame worthy or would I maybe finish stitching it and gift it to someone because our tastes change. This is the Jane sampler, the Jane sampler, the Jane Austen, um, from that I had shown you before by the sampler girl on travel with Jane Austen. This is the one that I'm going to get up and start probably this weekend. So this one is going to be a new start. So even though I have um, reduced my whips, it doesn't mean I'm never going to start any. In fact, I've only started one this year so far, and I stitched quite a bit of that. That's the Forget Me Not by European Reproduction Samplers. What's kind of fun on this one is that um, she includes this thing called the Barouche Ticket, and it says, Admit to On Travel with Jane Austen. Number and party, one stitching Janeite, destination Bath, England, because in Jane Austen's books, they often vacationed in Bath. Compliments of the Sampler Girl. I thought that was just a fun little extra that she tucked into this pattern. And I didn't know it was there until I took it out to take a look, a closer look at the pattern itself. So I am, it's really adorable. I can't wait to start that one. I think I feel better now that I've made the commitment that I'm going to stitch but, um, that one. And Persuasion is the other new start by the Stitching Parlor. It's so pretty. Oh, I just died when I saw it. And when I thought I couldn't get it, I had total FOMO. Total FOMO, which led me to contact the designer. So I did end up with two of the Stitching Parlors. This is Fanny's Treasures. It says, we have all a better guide in ourselves if we would attend to it than any other person can be. Hmm. Isn't that sweet? I love that. So this one is available. And if you want any of the Jane Austen sampler girl patterns, you can reach out to acorns and threads. And I told Janine, I'm like, heads up. I'm talking about this on a video if you might want to order some of these. Here's the other one. This is Felicity. Is there a Felicity in the world superior to this? Isn't that pretty? That's so sort of romantic, isn't it? I, and I might even stitch that on a different color fabric. Wouldn't that be pretty on like a blush color fabric? Something like Chantilly, Chantilly Lace. Is that what it's called by r, &R? Those are both beautiful. And this also came. So I'm just going to switch gear and talk about some things that are it's not a lot of haul. Um, 
So this one I did get in the mail and I have another one ordered too. I'm going to take this out because it's one of those shiny patterns. This is like a Disney licensed, um, it's like a Haid. So Cinderella was my favorite princess growing up. I loved the movie Cinderella. And of course, you know, when, when I was a kid, you just saw it one time in the theater, if you saw it at all. Then maybe once in a great while, maybe you would see it on the Disney Channel. Maybe. But I just love this. Now, this is this is what cracks me up. This pattern, um, and I bought this off of eBay. So I think that this, if you look this up, this particular company, I'm just going to put this right here. And this is called Dancing in the Starlight. Um they have you stitch it two over two on 14 count white Ada. And I was like, uh, no, that is not going to happen. Now, I don't know that it's as fine of a pattern, if it will stitch up as with as much detail as a Hade does. Because, you know, with Hades, you can use, you can get the max colors where there's, I don't know if it's a higher stitch density or it's just more color changes to create more definition. Um, if this is a, if you stitch it on 14 count Ada or, or 28 count linen, the stitch size is 25 by 17, but more likely than not, I will stitch it on like a 46 count one thread over two full cross. I think that comes out to be something more like 15 by something. And... I'm not going to stitch it on white. Uh, no, because that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, everything's going to show through. So I think what I'll do is try and find the most medium, the most used blue color and just dunk it. See if I can find a writ dye that's a recipe that's close to that and just just get some, um, maybe I'll get 40 count linen. I've got some and just writ dye it and then stitch over that. And that should help with the coverage. But I just love this. There's another one with bell and um so beauty and the beast where she's dancing with the beast and it's beautiful as well that's the other one that i bought anyway because and i have one other um disney one that's like one of those i don't know if it's a thomas kincaid or i don't know disney dreams i don't know what it is but it's one of the ones that came out you know 15 years ago and i liked it because it has cinderella's castle in it and it has um Walt Disney holding hands with Mickey Mouse, which is so sweet. And they're walking toward the castle. So I have a soft spot for that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what is on my radar to start. So you saw the one Jane Austen from Sampler Girl. I'm for sure going to start that. And I think that'll go pretty quickly. There's a lot of letters in that one. And, um... I'm for sure going to start persuasion when I pick that up. And I think after my nephew's um, eighth grade promotion next week, on the way back home, I'll stop at Acorns and Threads and pick up my patterns. And I'll probably kit that one up while I'm there. So that'll be another start. And then the third one. So I have three starts. Like I had none and talk about good self-discipline and then you know, like a wrecking ball. This is a couple, I had a couple of these bags left over um, from the last retreat. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have two of them. I'm going to, this will be the second giveaway on this video. So this bag is, um, I'll have, I'll go ahead and use one and I will give one away on the channel. So when you, um, make your comment about your favorite memory. Um, just let me know if you want, um, just put bag, if you want the bag or if you want the peacock or if you want them both, just put them both in there. You don't have to use it in a sense if you don't want to, but just I'll use those keywords to search. But I, I do love this. This is sort of that chintz, you know, it's almost like a calico kind of a, it has this pretty pink kind of a, almost like a salmony pink. I really like this bag. Anyway, so in this bag, 
is my next start. And I'm starting this. I might start it today. I haven't decided if it's today, today or when I get to Lori's tomorrow or this week. This is my next start. This one has been calling to me for quite a bit. Quite a bit. This is um, Jane Summers' work, 1831, by Shakespeare's Peddler. Do you wonder why I'm attracted to this one? The color palette is totally a Lisa color palette. And I love that there's a brick house and it is surrounded by flowers. And then it even has this little bit of kind of a, I think the color is deep sea or it's a blue weeks color. So I had a little pop of that teal, but the, I just love the reds. And there are quite a few reds and pinks. I threw a couple of extra ones in here because I might do a little um, floss toss to see how, what shows up better. And I think this is the, it's really just reds, creams. Oh, I don't have the blue yet because I have to pick that up from, from Acorns and Threads. I probably should could pick something in my own stash, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do whatever I want. I have 46 count vintage uh, Lakeside Exemplar that I just got from Country Sampler. So I think I'm. this will look great on here. Um, I've checked all the colors should show up well when you just use one thread, except this flax, this flax sort of melts into it. So I might substitute that, you know, and it depends. Some of these colors are okay. Even if they're close, if they're surrounded by a darker color. So, um, and if it's a little ghosty, I'm probably okay with that. So this is my, it's my next new start. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. I also have these in mind. Now I've shown you some of these in the past. I've added, this is my sooner rather than later pile. pile. I'm really trying to be good. But as I go through my stash and think, will I stitch this? Will it be on my wall? It might be replaced with one of these instead. This one, I was kind of looking through my patterns and I've always liked this one, Lucy Red Sampler. I will have a red sampler wall, a blue sampler wall in my next house. In fact, I have sort of a blue room right now. It's a blue gray, it's beautiful. It's such a calm room to be in. And I can just imagine walking in to the bedroom and having a collection of handmade objects that really are more they either have blue, the fabric's blue, or the stitching is blue, or you can see a blue theme. But um, this one, look at the, that floral bouquet just gets me. And all of the, let's see, this looks like, I'm not sure what this is. I'm not sure what this is. We've got a couple of houses and some verses. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look on Google and see if I can um, see what I finished you can look, look at Google images and you can see finishes where people have completed it. Now, the only thing about this that's kind of a, bum, a bummer is that it's a fold out chart. So I'll have to go down and find a, you know, place that I can have this copied so that I can have a working copy. So that one's been on my mind. Then Annie from Annie B's Folk Art, she sent this and I love the colors in this. I think this would go quickly too. So I might start this. This might be a 4th of July start. It might be. That would give me time to pull the colors together. And I probably have, I have several of these just by looking at it. Turkish red, one of my favorite reds. Turkish red, Lancaster red. Turkish red is probably my favorite. Yep. Or cranberry is another favorite too, but that's, that is a little bit, um, uh, brighter red. So this is came from Kitten Stitcher's Advent box. And this would be my Christmas start. This is Heartstring Samplery Ye Old Noel. Again, those colors just kill me. And I think that would go pretty quickly. There's a lot of, you know, unstitched space in there and the flowers are different. They're not the same 
they're not the same strawberry, they're the same tulips, or the same flowers. These are very different. So that's super pretty. That one's on a short list. That might be a July start. Um, sister sampler. You know full well, as I do, the value of a sister's affection. There is nothing like it in the world. Charlotte Bronte. I think I showed you this. I bought this last time. I might start this. It could be a little bit later this year, maybe August. I think that one would go pretty quickly as well. And then when I showed you the five projects I was thinking about having a new start with, I took a poll and hands down, Jane Hopkins was the winner. Although there were a lot of favorable comments for the other pieces that I would stitch. And I think I would stitch this in DMC. I have seen a lot of people working on it on Instagram, showing their pictures. I, by the way, I really appreciate it. I don't know what's going on with Instagram. Like I go through my feed and like every other image is not somebody I'm following. It's either sponsored or I don't even know who they are, you know, coming up on my feed. So I wish they would just let me, I wish I could just use it so that I could see the people who I follow. Anyway, do I love this? I absolutely love this. This is one of the most beautiful stitched up pieces I've ever seen. It's so beautiful. That's definitely a short lister. This one was, I don't know if it's MG or MT1810. This also, I think, is stitched in DMC. Look at how beautiful that is. Those birds, all of them, they would be pretty little smalls. So you could do them individually or together. This is a big piece. It's 518 by 396. But truly, I don't know. And it's 28 inches by 22 inches if you stitch it on 36 count. That's huge. But I would love this. I would love to have this right next to Dutch Beauty on my wall. Right? Am I right? I'm right. All right. This one I'll show you another time. This is a short lister. This was my number one pick from market. That one and another one. I don't have GH, the one that's from the Netherlands, I think. But this is, oh, the colors in this are fantastic. I have linen that this would work with too. And um, I might kit this up when I go to Acorns and Threads. Why not? Well, this is a lot of DMC. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's just two DMC. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks. Four general arts, three general, four general arts and three classic color. And I have quite a few of those. But anyway, that's gorgeous. Also, Christy Barron. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I better take that out. I, I will say that I just really don't care for the these that open that are sticky. I'm, a, I'm afraid I'm going to stick it to my pattern. Love, love, love this. I might, I might, I might get this one up. I wonder what my Acorns and Threads Collectors Club coupon is this month. That might determine if I get this up. I just love this though. So pretty. So that's a potential start. Maybe on my days off, I'll go out in my craft room and I'll work on finishing and then I'll just sort of strategize what I'm going to start next. Okay, this one is always on my mind. <laughs> I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not really sorry. I'm not really that sorry. Rosary Sampler, one of my very favorite all-time samplers, samplers of all time. Man, those colors are fantastic. Fantastic. I have this already kitted up, ready to go. I might just lose my mind and start all the things. Completely waste my plan. <laughs> well, here's the other one that this one I have almost kitted up. I need, do I have, I'm going to go have to look through my fabric and my stash. GH1857. I have, somebody's finished this. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I think I need one thread. 
on that one. I better check all these and get my plan together for my visit to Acorns. Um, this one. This one's stunningly beautiful. Victorine Delacroix. Buy the sampler. Look at the blues in that. And I love a good cartouche. I have seen somebody stitching on this on Instagram. I can't remember who it is. But I believe I just have like an ivory Zweigart. I went for something and I might just dunk it in coffee. We'll see. I might I might give it a little bit of movement. We'll see. I don't know. I have everything for that too. I have all the I think I know I'm missing a couple of threads on here, but this is Swell Delge. I usually use I usually use cotton over dyes the most, but sometimes I use a silk. Um, I think Mama Loves You GB, Michelle from, from Mama Loves You GB finished this one. This is a Northumberland sampler house pattern. Carolyn Scott, 1821. Again, the reds. That's so pretty. You know, I look at these and I go, where, why can't I find a sampler like that? And then I do have some beautiful antique samplers that I'm just holding on to, not holding on to. So the last, nope, I've got two more. I've got this one, Elizabeth Simon by the Scarlet Letter. Those colors are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um... And I, the, I have a couple of fabrics, but I think the one I'm going to use is something that is a little unexpected, which is um, Brash by Picture This Plus. Very dark and rich colors. And I think since I was shopping for Victorine Delacroix the last time I was there, I also bought the Delge for this particular one. Then the last one that's been on my mind quite a bit lately, this was gifted to me by a fellow stitcher, is, um, I don't think this one is available. Although I think Cecilia's samplers in, where is she? Branson or Nashville? I can't remember. Is a most noble pursuit. And my friend Vanessa Flame Fingers on Instagram, I think, is stitching this. And so every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I've got to start that. This is a collaboration by several different designers. And the people on here are primitive traditions. They are no longer designing. Hands to work, bright needle, the work basket, praiseworthy stitches, Patricia Ann designs with my needle, Ellen Chester. La di da, stitch in a prayer, and carriage house samplings. So I think I would. This looks like it's a, like a white linen almost, and I think I would maybe um, maybe take it down a notch. Maybe stitch it on like a. I have sampler gold by um, color and cotton. That's a definite possibility. This would be pretty on like Meadow Rue. That pink really jumps off the page. So the goldy color of sand dune would be pretty or Meadow Rue. There's a lot of good colors that would work with this. Well, now I need to sort of knit together this video. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I hope that you're having a great day out. It's pouring rain again here as usual. I don't know why I'm puzzled by that. It's spring in the Pacific Northwest. It's always raining. We just haven't, we need to have a little bit of sunshine. We're ready for it. I will probably see you in a couple weeks. Thanks for hanging around with me and have a great day. Take care.